Hey guys, this is a really exciting tutorial because I'll show you how to add objects to almost any footage even if it's handheld in 3D. So you can add a whole lot of things like this. So let's get started. So what you can do is you can go to um, Blender and you can open up a new VFX workspace. That in my mind, that, that's like has everything they need to do VFX. So this is a VFX tutorial. So let's open our footage. I think I have some right here. So, let's see, I have, these are some ones I shot in the parking lot. You can use anything, just, um, it doesn't have to be a parking lot, but these were just some of the best. I think this one's the best because I called it best possible, whatever that is. So, we can prefetch it, um, right here, that'll just make everything more responsive, and it's like, load, it's loading it up into Blender, just to make things run faster. So you can see, we want to add some sort of thing to this footage and we can do this in easier cycles yeah, cycles is really easy to insert the objects after you motion track it Eevee it requires a little bit of a node set but it's, it's no trouble so uh, I thought it was really cool that you could use ambient inclusion and stuff but we'll get into that later so and you could go to add um the tracking markers and do it all manually to this footage so you'd like press add but no I, I don't want to add so I just control Z. So what I want to do is do detect features and that does it for you. Sometimes you'll want to do it manually, but I just turn down the threshold and just get as many as you can. And look, so now we have our motion trackers. So we um so we can track it forward by pressing this little button. Um actually, yes. We, um, we have to press A to select all of them. Press A on your keyboard. And now track. Press this little button. And look, it tracks it until all the markers are gone. You want at least eight markers. For everything. But that makes sense. See, look, it tracks for a while. But then it goes to... That gets rotten. So go to the end frame. And then detect features again. And track backwards. And look, we actually got some more there. But there, aren't, there are very few here. So let's just go ahead and add some more. Track them. Add some more right here, maybe. And may, um, press say again. And add some more, may right here. Forwards. And then. And then, um, let's go back here. There, there, aren't, there aren't as many as I'd like, so I might just add a few more right here. And that should be enough. I kind of tend to, um, do a bit more than is necessary, but. Like right here, just try to find places without as many markers and then just track it. So the more markers you have, the better your solve will be. So like right here, I might want a couple more. And, oh, there are definitely not enough there. Heck yeah. It's so maybe right here to fix some more. It's, it's pretty fast in my computer since I have a good computer, but if it's not that fast, that's not too much of a problem. Just, you'll have to wait longer. So. Check this out, look, they're all following. But then take a, then move this up and zoom out a bit. You can see some are going really haywire, so you can just um select those and press delt to, to delete them. And just, just find ones that stray off of the main course, and that, that's what you need to do the most. And if they stray off, that's just bad. There's an automated way to do that, but um I like to do it manually most. I guess it's not too necessary, but like ones like that that just seem to go like way off and and they're gonna completely mess up your track if you um because we're trying to solve the camera motion. Oh yeah, that definitely should not be there. It's okay if there are a couple, just try to get rid of as many as possible. Great right here. Now that's good enough for me. I'm, it's best if you can do it pretty well, but I'm, this is just and for the tutorial's sake, I'll just leave it here. So now m m we, ha we have good tracking markers. So now, I think I shot this at like a 25 millimeter or something or something like a 25 millimeter phone or something like that. Um, you might have to guess, but let's go to the solve tab and um. We can go to the track, um, and this is like the sensor width, so I think we might want 25, I think, 
Or was it for, oh, yeah, no, no, no. It wasn't, um, it wasn't that. It was actually, we can keep it at 35. And I think it's actually pretty close, 25. So, we can, um, solve focal length and stuff. But we need to either choose, we cannot, do, um, tripod. So we could set these keyframes manually. That is very fast when you solve the camera motion. So you find the ones with the most trackers basically when you do keyframe A and keyframe B. If you check keyframe, the computer does that for you, though it takes a while to choose that. I'm lazy, so I just use keyframe, but it takes a bit longer. So now we can hit solve camera motion. Maybe we could also refine the optical center. So now you can see it's selecting its keyframes, and this might take a while. But oh, it's actually going pretty fast. So we're actually almost done. Yep, so we're done solving the camera. So, let's see, um, where did it show the air? Uh, it looks like that it did not actually work too well. I, let's check it out. Um, we need to hit A just for um, to select all of the tracking markers, I think. And then we could, I'll try solving it again. And then somewhere it should show, um, it will show the air, so like, how good of a track it got and that that's very important so 0 0.69 pix pixels um up here so see it, it was it's not too bad and on, and if it's less than half a pixel that is best so the only way to get rid of that is like to um, change the focal length a little or um or, or do it like stuff like that or add more tracking markers if it's really off like more than a pixel but for now it's i'm happy enough with it so the idea of this is there's going to be a camera in a 3d scene but and th this is the camera view so let's go into um let's make a new general layout workspace if you see the camera is not actually moving around when you when we play this and there's a reason for that we can easily just get everything set up with a click of a button because blender does it for you um and just want some like um we can get everything set up because blender does it for you um by clicking one button but for now let's just select three um tracking markers just find active ones um close to the middle of your footage is best just select three and these will become your floor so you can set it as a floor and you see your camera moves already and you can find the middle one and like set as the origin and now i we can set up a tracking scene just hit that and wooey look it did a whole ton of stuff so look look we have a 3d object in there isn't that that's so that's just so great um so now we can go into the layout tab and we can see look the camera's actually moving around based on our footage and it's like it's like almost like magic it's really cool how quickly you can do that in blender so in see like the camera's moving around and there's also an overlay um i like to turn it up to like um camera let's see it has background images and i like to turn up the opacity it's back and front um and that actually works really well so it's still not perfect but i could show you how to fix that what you can do um it's like it looks really oddly warped but that's because i probably did not choose a very good floor and just you can try you can set as a floor again and look that that actually looks a bit better like we could um, set, we could select two and set as a scale so it'll be one unit apart i might actually do like this, make those, and then you can set scale. Oh no, yeah, actually I might do like these two and... That's even worse! <laughs> uh, let's grab a line. Um, but anyway, it's like you can just, I think you, you can select two and then Set scale and perfect. So now we have our cube thing there. But, and so we have our cube here, but look, it doesn't have any shadows or anything. And something we could do is if we could go to cycles, um, cycles render engine, go to GPU, compute, and then um, 
for the still plane on the bottom, we could go on over here and set the visibility to a shadow catcher, which it actually, which it actually is. And like um sometimes this is not like the um, image. It's like um <clears throat> unfortunately sometimes this image is like does not show in the render, which I find super annoying. But um. Anyway, so what we can um, so we can just we're gonna work in Eevee for right now, and but we want shadows, so it's actually pretty easy. So what we do is we go, um, make a new shading tab, go to make shading, and we can um go into the camera view. Sometimes it gets really annoying like that, and but what we can do is we can actually make it work really well if we. Add an ambient occlusion note. I can show you how that works in a second. Let's just start by enabling screen space reflections, ambient occlusion, all the normal stuff. So let's move this up a little. I'll change this as mask from. Hmm. It's kind of weird. I'm gonna. I will delete it, and I will add a plane um that's not in the background. Then just then just scale it up. Move it gy, gx, and I'll add a new material. So, now what we can do is we can add an input ambient occlusion node. And what we can do is we can plug the color into the alpha. Um, you're you're going to need to set the blend mode and the shadow mode to alpha. Blend to alpha, I guess. So, now um, what this will do is when there's a shadow, it will create, well, it's doing the opposite of what we want. It's actually, you can see through it where there's a shadow. So what we can do is we can add a um, converter and like a color ramp. And then we drag it in there. And, we pull the, and then we pull them so that they're on the opposite side of the original. So and now we turn this color to black. And look, it creates a shadow. And that's, and that's an Eevee. And I just thought that was so cool. And turn off overlays, it turns off that. But and I love the way it creates a shadow and just a perfect shadow, right there under your subject. You and so you don't need a cube for a subject. You can use just about anything. Sometimes I like to do spheres. I actually am one of them. I actually added a single thing. Um, like that was pretty realistic. Hey, and look, look, so now we have our sphere integrated into the footage. And the really, and an even cooler thing that Blender did for us in the compositing workspace, when we tapped that little um, set up tracking scene, it actually, in the compositing, it set it up, it set up an entire thing to add the um, movie clip um, over the render so it showed perfectly, which I really found that really cool. So, that's just about it, I'd say. Um, oh, look, it's like, that is actually just so cool. Um, I hope this was a useful tutorial. You can press home if you want it to fill up the entire thing, which it, I wish it did anyway. If you don't want it to show in the preview, you um, go here, and then you, change, you turn off floor, and you turn off axes. And check that out. And... Look at that, and we have our little ball or whatever you want it to be in our scene. And if you want accurate reflections and stuff, that's another story. I'll do um, a tutorial on it at some point else. You can also use the other tutorial that I made. I know it's not that great, but I hope this was helpful, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you found it helpful. I really appreciate all of you who have subscribed. It's been really nice. So thank you for watching.